Hi guys, Dave from Gorilla Painting here and today we're going to be looking at my newly completed bolt action army. So this is themed on the 150th Panzer Brigade. Now they were established in Operation Grief, which was the German plan to use German troops uh, who spoke English um, and put them in US uniforms and use them to sort of infiltrate in behind enemy lines during the Ardennes Offensive and sort of cause havoc and disorder and stuff like that. Now the plan didn't actually work too well in the end for a number of different reasons. So I've set my my force um, on for the 150th Panzer on December 21st. Um, so that's after they'd finished sort of trying to do their sneaky mission and they'd started acting as a regular Panzer Brigade. So here's the core of the force. So we've got a first lieutenant and a just a buddy to go along with him. They're both veterans and I armed both of them with assault rifles. Then we have the medic. He's in the back here. He's also a veteran. And he's mostly in the list uh, to add a cheap extra order dice. Um, but occasionally you do roll that medic save and save one of your guys, which is quite useful. So then over on the left hand side here, we have um, the first of my two here Grenadier squads. So I run two identical squads in my 1000 point list. So that's an NCO with a submachine gun, two guys with assault rifles, and then five rifles. And each squad has got two Panzerfausts in it. There's more than two modelled on the models, um, but I only use two um, just due to points. Um, I don't want to be spending too much on those uh, sort of one-shot weapons there. So this squad here is my veteran pioneer squad. So it's a much smaller squad because uh, they're a lot more expensive. But I use these guys as a sort of uh, a counter-attacking unit, or quite often I use them to outflank um, because they're armed with a lot of short-range weaponry. So we've got one model here with a flamethrower. So this guy was converted from the regular here Grenadier flamethrower, um, just with some extra extra stuff added to his back um, just to give him that sort of uh, camouflage smock. Uh, bulked out the um, the front of the jacket as well, and I think I added a little bit of extra bulk to the sleeves too. Then there's NCO and three more guys with submachine guns. And one guy with a rifle who acts as the assistant to uh, the flamethrower guy. So these guys are very good if you get them in close range. Um, especially if you can get them into point blank range because they've got a large number of shots. And being veterans they're also uh, quite resilient against enemy firepower. Or they're great if you uh, assault them in. Uh, the pr tricky thing is getting them there. So then we have the weapons teams. Now because I don't have a large number of infantry in my army, these guys have to do quite a bit of the heavy lifting. So we've got a medium machine gun team here. They're quite good, uh, 36 inch range. They put out five shots, um, being a German machine gun as well, um, which is quite useful. Um, it's just a matter of getting them into the right position where they can fire without having to redeploy and things like that. But these guys over here are the stars. So this is a heavy mortar team, and then they've got a spotter as well. So these guys, uh, they start ranging in on a 6. Um, they're inexperienced, but it doesn't, um, doesn't really affect them. But the beauty is, is once you uh, sort of hit a squad, it's 2d6 blast, um, and plus 3 on the penetration, I believe. So these guys, if they hit, just absolutely annihilate things. Um, so I definitely think it's worth the extra sort of 10 or 11 points, I think it is, over the cost of a medium mortar. So it was the Winter MG team um, from Warlord, and then it was the Warlord heavy um, mortar team for Heer Grenadiers. And then again, I've done a little bit of uh, converting work um, to bulk up the camouflage smock on this guy. And then this one at the back. I actually uh, green stuffed the whole bottom half of his great coat there, um, so I still need to do a little bit of highlighting on him just to uh, just to finish it off. But uh, I was actually pretty happy um, with how the coat came out, uh, considering how much work needed to go on it. And so then you've got this guy at the front. Um, he got some middens added and then a bit of a scarf and stuff, but he's uh, a little bit underdressed uh, for the weather in the Battle of the Bulge, that's for sure. Then it's on to the first of the vehicles. 
So this is a KZ, so KFZ 251 OSD from Rubicon Games. Um, and it's got the Warlord uh, Winter Machine Gunner crewman on the top. And then inside we've got another crewman here. Um, so he's actually from the Heavy Mortar team. Um, I was sent a couple of duplicates, so I didn't use him on the mortar crew. Um, I did a little bit of trimming and stuff to fit him in here inside, though he's just about to redeploy out with a ammo box. So this usually transports um, either one of the Heer Grenadiers or the Pioneer Squad. Uh, just helps them get up the table faster, um, so it can zip on up, especially if there's a road. Um, helps them deploy further in and let them get their short range weaponry um, into where they can do the most damage. But there's a reason why we don't have many things in this army, and that's because of this big fella here. So this is the centerpiece, 355 points worth of regular panther tank. Now, as you can see, it doesn't quite look like a panther. So one of the sort of iconic things which the 150th Panzergrenz did was to um, disguise a bunch of Panther tanks as US M10s. So they did this by adding a lot of sheet metal um, to change the profile of the turret and the hull. They removed the uh, command coupler from the top of the turret as well and then painted them in US colours with the US markings and everything else. So this model was mostly scratch built for all those um, additional parts. So it was the Rubicon Panther of G. And then all this extra work on the turret, um, the front turret there, or the gun mantlet I should say, um, the front portion of the hull, um, that was all scratch built out of plastic card um, and then leveled off with green stuff and things like that. Then um, the side skirts, were all heavily cut down and remodeled um, from the ones in the Rubicon kit. And also the back piece of the hull here was all scratch built up. So it was a couple of weeks worth of um, scratch building. And at the end of the video I'll show you a couple of photos um, of the work in progress. But was really pleased with how it turned out. Um, it's my first time trying to scratch build that sort of level of detail on a historical kit like this. Um, I've done it before with 40k stuff, which is a little bit more forgiving. Um, whereas here you need to be quite exacting in how it all, uh, how it all goes together. Um, so this one was painted with the AK Interactive uh, US Olive Drab um, paint set. And then um, a little bit of weathering using dark streaking grime and stuff. I didn't want too much in the way of streaking um, or rust stains or chipping on it because it will obviously have been repainted fairly soon to when it went into battle. Um, so there wouldn't have been that much in the way of weathering on that. So I kept myself restricted to a little bit of mud around the sides, um, especially at the back and on the road wheels and things. And then I gave it sort of a fresh coating of snow and that was using a mixture of uh, water effects um, baking soda and some Citadel snow flock which I had left over. Um, so what I ended up doing is I applied the thicker thicker bits of snow um, using a sort of a few different pastes and things like that. Hit the whole model with the matte varnish and then just sort of sprinkled the baking soda over it like this um, to get this little light falling snow in on the sides. So I was really pleased with how that turned out. Um, I'm hoping, um, I know baking soda can be a little bit unstable under sunlight and things like that, so I'm hoping it maintains its colour fairly well, um, but if it does change colour a little bit then I'll just hit it with a little bit of white paint just to even it back out. So thanks for watching guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed taking this look at the first sort of big project of 2016 that I managed to get finished off. I do have a whole lot more infantry and stuff to go into this army um, when I'm running it with a sort of a more a more, how should we say, effective uh, army list rather than including this big fella here because at uh, 1,000 points he just uh, he uses up far too much for what he can do but uh, it looks awesome so that's why he's in there. So check out the photos um, at the end and sound off in the comments below what do you think. But until next time guys, happy modelling.